Hi everyone, I'm Sam Momin from the European Galaxy team in Freiburg, Germany. Today in this video, we would be focusing on the topic identification of AMR genes in an assembled bacterial genome. The objective of this tutorial is to run a series of tools to access the presence of antimicrobial resistant genes and retrieve information about them and visualize the ARGs and plasmid genes in their gene context. Before jumping to the analysis, let us first understand what antimicrobial resistance means. Antimicrobial resistance or AMR is a growing global threat which knows no geographical or species boundaries affecting humans, animals and the environment alike. As bacteria evolve, the drug we once relied on to treat infection are becoming less effective, putting millions of life at risk. AMR is a complex issue that comprises our ability to treat bacterial infections, but how can we detect and combat it? One way is through the power of genome sequencing. By sequencing the entire genome of bacteria, researchers can access the AMR gene contact. This allows them to detect known resistant mechanism and potential uncover novel ones. To understand the process of AMR identification, in this tutorial, we will use the bacterial genome assembly of the KUN1163 sample, which was generated by a bacterial genome assembly tutorial using data from a study by Hikichi et al. in 2019. So let's get started. To get started with this analysis, the first step would be to create a new history and rename it and import the required fi files for this analysis. So let's start with creating a new history and renaming the history. To do so, you have to click on the plus icon to create a new history. And further to rename it, we will click on the pencil icon by which we can rename the history. Now we have successfully created a new history and renamed it. The next step would be to import the required data to start with our analysis. To do so, we would be using a remotely located file from a Zenodo server and import it into our Galaxy history. To do so, we would copy the location of this file and import this using the upload button and further click on the fetch, paste and fetch data and paste the URL for the file. Once this is done, we will just click on the start button. This will allow us to retrieve the file located into a remote server and use it in our Galaxy history. As we can see now, the file has been successfully imported into Galaxy history and now we will start with the downstream analysis. The first step of this tutorial is to identify AMR genes. To identify AMR genes in the contact file, there are several tools such as Abricate or Star AMR which can perform this analysis. In context of this tutorial, we would be specifically using Star AMR which will scan bacterial genome context against REST finder database, point finder database and plasmid finder database and report us a detailed summary of the detected antimicrobial resistant genes. Now to start with the analysis of identification of AMR genes, first we will select the star AMR tool and provide with the required parameters. To do so, now we will select the star AMR in our toolbox to the left hand side, click on the tool which gives us the tool form which specifies all the required parameters for this tool to run. As you can see in the first tool input parameter, we need to specify our genome or contact file. So we will specify the recently imported contact.fasta file into this field and later we would just run the tool against the different databases. As you can see now, the tool has started successfully and we will wait a bit to retrieve the results. As we can see now, the star AMR tool has been completed successfully and let's dive now into the eight key output that star AMR generates when analyzing genomes. 
starting first with the main output file of summary.tsv. To inspect or to view this file, we will click on the display button to the right hand side of the panel. The file gives a comprehensive overview of the all detected AMR genes, mutation, plasmids and sequence type for each genome. Each row here represents a different genome. The first column is the isolate ID which corresponds to the genome file analyzed. Following that, the quality module indicates whether the genome passed or failed the quality checks. The genotype shows the AMR gene or the mutation found. Next, we have the predicted phenotype, which, which forecasts drug resistance based on the genotype. Additionally, the CGA predicted phenotype from the Center for Genomic Epidemiology provides an alternate prediction. In the plasmid column, any identified plasmid types are listed. The scheme column shows which MLST scheme was used. MLST here stands for multi-locus sequencing typing, a method that characterizes Characterizes microbial species by analyzing several housekeeping genes. The sequence type column combines allele types to assign a sequence type. Other important genomic statistics include genome length, the N50 value, and the number of contacts longer than 300 base pair value. Finally, the quality module feedback provides a detailed feedback on the genome's quality metric. Now let's have a look at the detailed summary.tsv file generated by the STAR AMR which provides an in-depth view of antimicrobial resistant gene detection in each genome. Unlike the high-level summary.tsv file, the detailed summary.tsv file gives a more granular breakdown. Each row represents a single AMR gene, plasmid or sequence type detected in the genome. Starting with the isolate ID, this column identifies the genome being analyzed. The data column lists specific AMR genes found in the rest finder, plasmid finder, or point finder, along with sequence type information from MLST. The data type tells us if the detected gene is related to resistance, plasmid, or part of the MLST analysis. Then we have the predicted phenotype column, which predicts drug resistance from rest finder or point finder. The next column is the CGE predicted phenotype, which gives us more information about secondary prediction for the AMR resistance. The percent identity column shows how closely the detected gene matches known gene list in the database. The percent overlap column measures how much of the gene was aligned in the top blast head by calculating the ratio of HSP length to the total gene length. Next, we see the HSP length and the total length which represent the length of highest scoring blast hit. The contact columns identifies which contact the gene is found on with the start and end position marking the gene's location on the contact. Finally, the accession column provides the accession number from the rest finder or plasmid finder database allowing easy cross reference with known sequences. In the similar way, we can look at the results reported individually by rest finder, plasmid finder, along with MLST information in their respective generated TSP file. Finally, the HITS file is a collection of FASTA file of the BLAST HSP nucleotides for the entries listed in restfinder.tsv and pointfinder.tsv files. This completes our first part of the tutorial for identification of AMR genes using STAR AMR2. We can also retrieve more information about the detected antibiotic resistant gene by checking the CAR database. The database can serve a potential help to check all the resistant gene and check if it's logical to find resistant gene in specific bacteria. Now going further in this tutorial, we will now look at visualization of the ARGs and plasmid genes in their genomic context. For this, we will use the JBrowse tool supplemented with additional information such as assembly as the reference, ARG locations, contact annotation and coverage of the context from the raw reads. To get started with this, initially we need to extract the ARGs and plasmid gene location. This information can be found in the detailed summary.tsv file given as output from the STAR AMR tool. 
We will now use a tool called select line that match an expression and feed the detailed summary .tsv file along with the matching pattern to extract this information. So let's get started with this. So we have selected the tool and now we will feed the detailed summary.tsv file as an input and we will also specify the pattern what we would like to obtain the resultant information in. So now I have specified all the parameters and now we will click on the run tool button. This might take a few minutes to obtain the results. As we can see now we have obtained the results from our pattern matching tool and to visualize this result we can click on the display i button. The table which we have obtained from the resultant pattern matching cannot be directly used in the JBrowse tool. To further use this information we need to first transform the table into GFF3 file format which is a file format used for describing genes and other features of DNA, RNA and protein sequences. You can read more about the GFF3 file specification here below. Let's now convert the table to GFF3 format using the tool table to GFF3. So to the left side of our panel, I will select the tool table to GFF3 and here we need to specify several parameters in here such as record ID column, start end column, type, source and source column. We will feed in this values based on our table column numbers. Let's get started with this. So the record ID column represents the column number 9. So we will feed the column number 9 here. Next the start and end column represent 10th and 11th column number. So let's also feed that in here. The types core and source column are 3, 6, 3 respectively. So let's also Fill that in six three. Next, we will also need to insert qualifier information such as name, phenotype, and accession along with their column numbers respectively. So let's do that. So the first qualifier which will be specified is the name with the corresponding column number as two. So here we have to click on the insert qualifier. We have to rename the name of qualifier to name and specify the column number of the name column to two. The next qualifier which we would insert is the phenotype qualifier with column number four. So let's do that phenotype with column number four. And the final qualifier which we need to insert is the accession having column number 12. Once all the information have been filled in this form, we will now click on the run tool button. As we can see, the table to GFF3 conversion has been completed successfully. Next, along with the ARGs and plasmid gene information, it would be also beneficial to have extra information about other genes on the context. 
There are several tools such as Proca and Bakta which can assist us in rapid and standardized annotation of the genomes and plasmid. In context of this tutorial, it is recommended to use Bakta tool which provides the standardized annotation of bacterial genomes for both isolates and max. Let's now run the Bakta tool and select it from our tool panel and provide the necessary parameters for it. So first we have to specify the genome in FASTA format. In our case, our contact.fasta will be fed in here. Next, we need to specify the Bakta and the AMR Finder database as per the latest versions. So let's do that. Along with this, we also have to provide an optional parameter for optional annotation for keeping original contig header. Let's do that. So let's go in optional annotation and just slide the button for keep original contig header to yes. And now as you can see, all the parameters are fed to this tool and let's now click on the run tool button. The annotation of the genomes or plasmids using Bakta can take a significant amount of time. So until that we can sit back and relax. So as we can see the annotation of contexts have been completed successfully by the Bakta tool and as output it gives out annotation and sequence file in GFF format, feature nucleotide sequences and annotation plot. You can inspect those files by clicking on the display button. Next to add more information about coverage of context and genes, we can map the reads that were used to build the context using Bautitu Aligner. For this, we will first retrieve the raw reads from the Zenodo server into our galaxy. We will first copy this to URL and paste into the data download tool and fetch the data into our Galaxy history. First we click on the upload button, then we go to the paste and fetch data and we paste our URL here. Once we have pasted our URLs here, we would click on the start button which will allow retrieving of the remotely located data sets into our galaxy history. The files have been now successfully retrieved into our galaxy history and now we will use them to map them with our contact file using Bautai2 tool. For this we will select the Bautai2 tool from the toolbox. So once we select this, we will change the type of raw reads from single end to paired end and we will specify our read 1 and read 2 respectively. Next we will also select the reference genome. In this case we will use a reference genome which will be our contact file which is already present in our history. And next we will select the contact.fasta file. Once all the parameters for the tool have been selected, we can double check if we missed out something. And then we also have to save the Bauta mapping statistics to a history and we have to toggle this to yes. So let's do that. Yes, we will now click this to yes. And now we will click on the run tool button. The Bautai2 mapping might take a bit of time, so we can retrieve the results once the mapping has been completed. The mapping of raw reads to our contact using Bautai2 has now been completed. 
and now we have three layers of information the context the mapping coverage and the genes we can visualize all these three layers on different information track using jbrowse so let's get started with the jbrowse visualization first we need to select the jbrowse tool from the toolbox to the left hand side once we do this we have to select the reference genome to display we will, we already have our contact or first of all into our history we will use a genome from our history and specify the contact dot first of file here next we will select the genetic code as the bacterial archaeal and the plant plus mid code so the genetic code we will change here to the bacterial archaeal and plant plus state code and further we need to insert track groups according to our different information here so let's start inserting tracks the first track would be the results from bakta so we have to click on the insert track group we have to rename the track category to bakta and next we have to click on the insert annotation track once we click on the insert annotation track we have to select the track type in the track type for the bakta we would be selecting gff gff3 and pet features so it's already been selected here and the respective data for the track we will also have to select it just to double check we will see if we are missing anything so yeah we have selected the right thing from the annotation and sequences and next we have to select the shape browse track type to need canvas features and we have to change the track visibility for on for new users we have to do this similar for more to the antibiotic resistant genes and plastic genes and for the coverage so let's do the same first we click on the insert track group we rename the second track group to ARGs and plasmid genes ARGs to plastic genes this is taking a bit more time because we have to manually input all the details here and next we will click on the insert annotation track from here again we will select the track type as gff3 and bed features and we will give the output of table to gff3 to our arg and plasmid gene annotation track so from this we will select the table to gff3 and we will do the same for j browser track type change it to neat canvas features and change the track visibilities for on for new users finally we would do for our last track information for the coverage we will select the track category or input the track category as coverage we will rename it we will insert an annotation track and the track type this time we have to carefully change it to at bam pile up in the bam track data we have to select the pautai 2's output and we have to click on the auto generate snp track and to toggle it to yes and finally we have to go to the bottom of the tool form and click on the run tool button so all the different layers of information which we have obtained from three different analysis we are currently visualizing it on the jbrowse
as you can see the J browse processing has been completed and now we can view the J browse results by clicking on the display button in the J browse we can enable different track information by clicking on the left hand panel so first is ARG and plasma gene second is the back the annotation of context sequences and third is the coverage information so in the output of jbrowse we can view the map reads and the found genes against the reference genome with the search tool we can also easily find gene of interest it is quite interesting to know that jbrowse can handle many inputs and can be very useful in context of answering various research questions With this we come to the end of this tutorial. To summarize this tutorial, we initially screened the context for AMR and plasmid genes. We then performed annotation of context using Bakta tool and finally visualized all the information collectively in the JBrowse tool. I hope you liked the video and have understood the topic. To help us improve this tutorial, we would be happy if you give us a short feedback link to the training material here thank you and wish you a happy learning